So today I will talk about the uh, recent advances in the modeling of gravitational waves um, using a combination of uh, analytic and numerical relativity method. And given the circumstances, I will perhaps focus more on some uh, analytic results, uh, although on the way I will mention several uh, state-of-art numerical relativity results and also uh, towards the end ongoing effort on uh, what we have to do next in numerical relativity. Also, as mentioned in the title, most of the talk concerned with binary composed of neutron stars. Uh, but again, in the last part, I will, I will give some highlights on parallel efforts in the construction of uh, binary black hole merger waveforms from generic orbits and also application to uh, recent application to gravitational wave astronomy. So this plot shows our best prediction uh, of the binary neutron star gravitational wave spectrum based on general relativity. And ground-based interferometers can in principle observe it all from uh, uh, all these waves from different dynamical regimes, so from the low frequency uh, in spiral motion through the fast motion merger process and eventually also kilohertz emission from the merger remnant that uh, in this case is composed of a massive and rapidly rotating uh, neutron star object before it collapses to black hole. And as illustrated by this figure, it is not really possible to measure the spectrum with a single technique, uh, but we need to combine perturbative method for the solution of the two-body problem in the spiral and eventually through merger together with uh, 3 plus 1 numerical relativity simulation of the merger and the post-merger phase. So fortunately, there's an overlap region that is shown in green, uh, where we can validate the analytical results for the merger prediction and also connect them in principle uh, to the post-merger prediction from numerical relativity. And this post-merger prediction can be obtained only with the numerical relativity simulation. So I will discuss how we have obtained actually a complete model uh, for the spectrum. And the framework we use is uh, the affecting one body approach that allows us to, com to combine uh, post-Newtonian test mass, gravitational self force result uh, all together to obtain a description that is valid from the slow motion to the fast motion regime. And this has been discussed in detail by Alessandra. But I want to remember that uh, um, the robustness in particular in the high frequency regime is typically ensured uh, through various resummation strategies of analytical results, through their validation uh, against uh, simulation data, and eventually by, by directly informing the, the analytical model with uh, numerical relativity by using uh, flexibility parameters of the model. So the main effect that uh, distinguish binary neutron star from binary black hole are tidal interaction, and it was already mentioned. Uh, these are in, in DOB, these are primarily included as an additive contribution to DOB radial potential, the tensor of the Hamiltonian that is sketched here in, uh, in the top right of this, um, of this slide. So the first step to model tidal interaction is to understand how a spherical neutron star is perturbed or responds, if you want, to an external gravitational field. This is called the inner problem because it deals with the field structure around the single body and how it is perturbed by the presence of other bodies. Uh, here Thibault gave a fundamental contribution to this problem, uh, which has been also already mentioned, uh, already in 1983, uh, in this quite complete, uh, 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 I would say it's almost a monography uh, for the <laughs> Lesouche, uh, for, uh, following the Lesouche uh, meeting. In this inner problem, uh, one that composes the perturbation uh, in, in moments and postulate that, for example, an external quadrupole perturbation induces a quadrupole deformation in the star. And the coefficient of proportionality is essentially the general relativistic extension of the, of the love number. In other terms, what one tries to do here is define polarizability coefficient for the gravitational field, which are analogous to those that we study in, in electromagnetism. So working in linear perturbation theory following Reggio Wheeler and Thorne and Campo Lattaro, it is possible to define uniquely uh, sets of multipolar gravitoelectric and gravitomagnetic uh, 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 tidal polarizability coefficient, essentially by matching the asymptotic uh, the asymptotically growing part and the asymptotically de decaying part of the perturbed uh, metric. And these quantities are very important in gravitational wave astronomy because they depend sensitively on the equation of state and the compactness of the bodies, as it is shown here in the um, bottom right plot. 
uh, if, if such coefficient can be measured from a gravitational wave, then one can imagine that this uh, measurement can constrain the neutron star structure and the, the equation of state. So here are the relevant pages uh, from, uh, from Thibault monography. Uh, I, I recommend to read it. Uh, and uh, it's, very, it's very amusing and certainly fundamental contribution. Um, so how <laughs> does this polarizability uh, coefficient, tidal polarizability coefficient enter the binary neutron star dynamics? Well, at leading order, uh, the quadrupolar love number combine uh, together into uh, a tidal coupling constant that here is called kappa T2. Uh, and this describes the attractive <coughs> and short range contribution of tides in the binary interaction potential, which is essentially determined by this radial uh, function A. And as you see here, uh, this, uh, this is the Newtonian uh, uh, <coughs> order contribution. <coughs> as you see here, the uh, radial potential is one over R Newtonian of partial term uh, plus the negative R to the minus six uh, contribution of the tides. So the same coupling constant appears in the leading order gravitational wave phase as, as shown here by the last expression. And at this level, there's no other parameter that is associated to the, to the neutron star structure. So perhaps this is a simple observation, but it turns out to be very useful to interpret the simulations. Here you have to imagine that uh, you have simulated uh, in numerical relativity the mergers of different binaries, uh, different masses, different equation of state. And I've computed, for example, gauge invariant quantity like the merger frequency, the binding energy, and so on. And the question that uh, uh, one has is, OK, how do I understand these numbers? How do I predict this quantity for cases that have not simulated? So the answer turned out to be pretty simple. Uh, and it is that the tidal coupling constant predicted analytically already at the Newtonian level captures very well uh, and to high precision full numerical relativity results. So this is shown here in this, uh, in this plot for this quantity like the merger frequency or the binding energy. So this is a useful result because from a finite number of simulation, it allows us to predict uh, the merger frequency and amplitude exactly, <coughs> essentially. Uh, and this quantity are not predicted by post newtonian method. It allows us to predict the energy emitted to merger and, for example, the gravitational wave peak luminosity for any binary neutral star configuration. And it also gives us bounds for the, uh, what, will be, what could be the remnant mass, the remnant <coughs> angular momentum, and overall total gravitational wave emission. So what this, what this observation, what this model, of course, does not do um, is to predict the entire waveform. <coughs> and for this, we need uh, instead to leverage to the you know, fully, fully OB model, included all the possible uh, post-Newtonian uh, results that we have, uh, and a higher order term in this, in this tidal potential A. And in particular, this paper with, uh, together with Thibault was uh, uh, the very first work uh, that propose a model able to describe the gravitational wave from uh, very low frequency up to merger, and that was validated against numerical relativity simulations. So here, the particular choice for the uh, tidal radial potential is based on work by Donato Bini and, and Thibault uh, that computed linear in mass ratio tidal invariants uh, up to 7.5 pn. And there, they propose a specific uh, global resummation of this gravitational self-force results. Uh, so the gravitational wave self force uh, red sum potential is shown in figure one uh, there on the top uh, right. And you can appreciate that uh, uh, the red line has this uh, uh, strong attractive character at short distance is precisely given by tides, especially if you compare it with the binary black hole representation of the same potential, which is the black line. And the main panel instead shows the, the waveform agreement with, uh, with simulation, which is uh, extremely good. Uh, was already extremely good in 2015. And here in this plot, I would like to, to also to appreciate the, the very small phase error of numerical relativity, which is this blue band, uh, which, uh, in, in, in which uh, we estimate that over several orbits, uh, we accumulate uh, uh, a subradiant, su su subradiant error in this, in this complicated 3D simulation. So just to give you an illustration of uh, what is a numerical relativity simulation, I prepared this, uh, this, this small video, which probably you have seen many times. Uh, a numerical relativity simulation solved consistently uh, Einstein field equation with matter terms in this case. 
and covers uh, hypersurfaces from inside the star all the way out to the to the wave zone. And this, sorry, you might have heard a sound if everything <laughs> worked correctly. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this simulation run on thousands of CPUs and are performed also at various resolution to assess this uh, algorithmic error. And what you have seen is, of course, the merger process, including several orbits and their merger remnant. And the sound that uh, probably disturbed uh, you has disturbed me uh, is essentially the gravitational wave frequency that is growing during the chirp signal, uh, monotonically in this case. And, and later, this complicated sound and with various tones and overtones so just reflects the complex emission at kilohertz regime from, uh, from the merger remnant. So here, I, I want to mention that on the other hand, there are many analytic in, uh, in what we do. Uh, and so I want to flesh out some of the key ideas that uh, uh, the first one is something that Ale Alessandra already mentioned. So there's a cr crucial summation of uh, post-Newtonian circular fluxes in terms of this factorized waveform, which is now used in all the, in all the UV models. Uh, and the second one is an approach to the spinning UV Hamiltonian based on the concept of centrifugal radius uh, that allows us to write the orbital part of the Kerr Hamiltonian in a, in a way that is formally identical to the, to the Schwarzschild one. And also for binary neutron star, it allows us to include easily uh, terms that are uh, quadratic in the, in the spin of a, sing, of a single component and that are equation of state dependent. So what are these waveform model good for and used for? Uh, well, the first detection of, of binary neutron star allowed actually a measurement of this tidal polarizability parameter, uh, or at least to set an upper limit uh, on those quantities. And this measurement excluded uh, a number of equation of state that for the given mass uh, uh, have tidal parameter that is too large and incompatible with the LIGO Virgo event. And note that this was a very non-trivial result. So the difficulty of, of measuring this tidal polarizability parameters explaining the right plot that shows essentially at which frequency, which frequency are mostly informative in a gravitational wave measurement. So for example, why the chirp mass uh, can be accurately determined by, by an spiral signal, as we all know, the tidal parameters are mostly determined by the latent spiral and, and merger. And this means that uh, together with the interferometer sensitivity at high frequency, as we have just learned from the previous talk, was also needs very accurate model uh, that, are, that, that, that reach the merger. So I will come back, uh, I will come back to this uh, waveform discussion in a second. But before I want to point out that uh, uh, the joint observation of gravitational wave and the electromagnetic signal actually can enhance the possibility to rule out uh, models for, uh, for extreme matter. Uh, and here is an example. Uh, so the crucial observation in this work was that uh, uh, the energetics of, of certain electromagnetic counterpart that we do have observed in August 17, um, seems to require the presence of a remnant in, in which there is a massive disk. And then numerical relative simulation indicate that at least for comparable, merge, for comparable masses merger, the remnant disk mask depends to some extent, uh, again, on this tidal coupling constant of the binary. So in turn, uh, a minimum mass that is implied for the observation uh, uh, implies a lower bound on the tidal coupling constant. And so one can combine this lower bound to the upper bound uh, given by the gravitational wave to obtain a tighter constraint on the tidal coupling constant. Here is called lambda tilde, but it's the same thing. And in this way, you can rule out even more uh, equation of state mode. I think this is a nice example uh, of the crucial role that numerical relativity plays in this, uh, in, in, in the only existing, but also in the future, there will be more uh, multi, um, observation with multi messengers. So let me go back now to uh, waveform models um, and discuss a bit more in detail the, the measurement of this tidal parameter, which I said is a delicate thing. So in this work, together with uh, 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 Rosella Gamba, Matteo Breschi, and other students in Jena, <coughs> sorry, we have repeated the analysis uh, uh, of 1717 with various approximants and also various choices of the frequency range. 
And what we have found is that uh, while there is no strong evidence for away from systematics, mm -hmm. there are differences uh, given by different, uh, different waveform models that are affecting the main results. Essentially, she shifts uh, in, the, in, in, this, in this posterior. And moreover, there is a, a bimodality that emerges when the data are analyzed up to very high frequency and that instead disappears uh, uh, if lower frequency are, are applied. Uh, so the message is that uh, future observation will have to be extremely careful uh, with, waveform, uh, with, with, with waveform systematics. And uh, um, indeed, if we compare statistical and systematic error in, in, in current state of art waveform, this is, this is what we find. Uh, we find that waveform systematics will be a major issue for future high precision me measurement with, uh, with signals that have high SNR. And in particular, this plot shows that uh, statistical uncertainty become comparable to systematics at SNR about 80, and systematic be becomes much larger, current systematics become much mm -hmm. larger at, uh, at, uh, at that level or at higher SNR. So here, the comparison with the future numerical relativity simulation will be crucial to model, to model tides correctly up to the very last orbit coalescence, because all this error that you see here is actually accumulated in the very last orbit. And of course, uh, this means that future simulation will have to be even more accurate than, than, than the current precision, precision, which is already very, uh, very high. So, so far I've discussed mostly waveform two mergers. Uh, so the question is how uh, can we go obtain, can we go beyond <laughs> and obtain a, a full spectrum model? And the answer is yes, or at least we have given a first answer. So here we have designed a, a first EOB completion with numerical relativity that describes the remnant emission and it is continuously connected to the spiral merger, merger waveform. And the key observation here is that uh, uh, the waveform parameterization that I've discussed for the merger can actually be extended to higher frequency. And in particular, the main features of the spectrum uh, can be captured again relatively well in terms of this tidal coupling constant in, in a way that is uh, EOS insensitive or fully weakly dependent on the choice of on the equation of state. And the main intuitive reason for uh, behind this result is that the emission of the remnant is very efficient and is localized in time immediately after merger. <laughs> and so features like uh, the peak frequency uh, of the post-merger signal computed from American relativity data still carry the imprint of the, of the, of the merger physics and can be described uh, together with the mer in, in spiral merging in a, in a sort of unified way. So if you have this, uh, this, this, this relation, this, this observation in hand, actually the extension of the analytical waveform to, to high frequency becomes, uh, becomes trivial. So what can we do with this uh, 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 kilohertz uh, post-merger signals? What uh, new information, the inclusion of a post-merger signal can give us? So one, one, might, one might expect that uh, the observation of a post-merger signal could carry some information about the extreme density that reach in the remnant, which are much higher, of course, than the, the, the density of, of the initial component. And indeed, this is what it happens. So this plot shows uh, results of a mock analysis, in this case, oh, but of, of a full spectrum analysis. Of a, of a binary neutron star that is uh, hypothetically captured by the, by the Einstein telescope. And the right plot showed the inferred constraint in the, in the mass reduced diagram, the <coughs> neutron star mass reduced diagram. So if only the spiral merger is employed or is, it is uh, detected, uh, mm -hmm. one gets a maximal, cons uh, maximal constraint at densities precisely corresponding to the individual densities in the, of the neutron star in the binary. However, the prediction for the maximum density and the maximum mass be, uh, are much more inaccurate. And uh, in this particular, at uh, this particular scenario are actually off. So the uh, red region here, the red area is actually outside the, 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 the injected signal. However, these are precisely the quantity the post-merger signal is, is, is capable to constrain. Uh, and this is shown in the right plot. And so if we add the post-merger signal and we, to the analysis and we, do a complete analysis, uh, what we get is, is a tight measurement of the maximum mass and exclusion of a significant uh, a portion of the uh, currently allowed equation of state mode. So this suggests that, uh, uh, sorry? 
five more minutes. Yeah. So this suggests that uh, uh, um, next generation, third generation observation, together with astrophysical constraint, could really deliver invaluable measurement of, of, of the neutron star uh, composition. Uh, so let me now switch to binary black hole. Uh, so as described by Alessandra, the story starts much more, much before. Uh, but this was my first work with, uh, with Ibo, so I'll start from here. Um, a main element introduced in, in this work was the use of PD function to resum uh, the 5pn radial potential with log terms uh, that exploited at the time a uh, very new result, post-Newtonian result. And since then, it's, uh, it's our, standard, our standard choice. Uh, this plot here shows the behavior of this function for different values of the mass ratio uh, that, that of course holds from the comparable to the large mass ratio re regime. And I think Lior Barak will discuss later um, in the days in detail the, the gravitational self-force limit uh, in his talk, which is very relevant to describe uh, gravitational wave from laser sources. And a second element introduced there um, was a particular choice of this uh, uh, next to quasi-circular correction uh, to the factorized waveform that uh, also have been already introduced. And in this work in particular, we employ not only 3D numerical relativity result, but uh, the NQC design was uh, heavily based on numerical solution of black hole perturbation theory, uh, considering the test mass limit. And um, so, in particular, uh, the waveform development actually triggered the development of, met of numerical methods for the solution of uh, a Joweird Zerilli and Tukowski equation with particle source term and using hyperboloidal foliation. So this work built on, uh, on, on previous work of Anil Zinjino Blue, and the outcome was a precise general prescription to build suitable hyperboloidal coordinates. Uh, that uh, would not only allow the computation of waveform at null infinity, but also improve the accuracy of uh, numerical computation by removing any artificial boundary condition. So the key addition to uh, Zenjinoglu work was precisely to demand that, uh, um, to construct the hyperboloidal uh, coordinate in a way that uh, outgoing null rays would remain invariant. And in this case, I think we really solved the problem. So this gives a complete solution to the perturbative problem. And noted that by contrast, uh, the numerical solution, uh, say, of conformal Einstein field equation for astrophysical application uh, remains an important open problem in, in, in numerical relativity. Uh, so this is the current statute of our EOB model. Uh, for quasi-circular orb orbit, the, the model shows a high consistency between the waveform and the radiation reaction flux, actually being comparable with numerical relativity error. And this is again obtained with a careful model of uh, next to quasi-circular correction. Uh, the model now contains spin precession effect uh, and other interaction. And it is also directly usable in gravitational wave analysis because um, it can be, um, uh, we have developed a fast method to, to, to solve for the Hamiltonian flow. And so this is very competitive evaluation times. And the, or the overall accuracy, which is the central plot in this slide, uh, which is measured in terms against the numerical relativity data in terms of faithfulness, might actually be sufficient also for analysis with ISNR and, and third generation detector. So however, the model is not restricted to circular orbit. Uh, already in 2014, sorry, um, Thibault and others showed that the UB could be employed for open orbits. And for example, they were able to reproduce the, the scattering angle to few percent uh, comparing to numerical relativity. And more recent work focused on developing faithful model for arbitrary or orbits. And the main idea is here in this paper by um, Chiaramello and Nagar. That again, and again builds uh, on including appropriate some mm -hmm. expression for circular, uh, for, for, sorry, for generic orbits in this factorized waveform. So as this plot shows, the model captures bound orbits from small eccentricity to high eccentricity, and also dynamical encounters, uh, and for arbitrary mass ratio. Here the plot uh, uh, show again uh, the comparison with the, with the Koski waveform. And more work is ongoing here, especially to extend the parameter space covered by numerical relativity simulation that for this special configuration are, are, are very few. And a strong motivation for developing uh, faithful models of hyperbolic merger came uh, a couple of, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, essentially very recently with this event uh, uh, named the 1905-21. This is a very short gravitational wave transit at, at SNR 15. Uh, 
uh, that is uh, that is difficult to interpret because it's so short. Astrophysically, it's very interesting because uh, the black holes are very massive and uh, they fall in a range that is forbidden uh, if we assume that this black hole are formed by um, direct stellar collapse. So there are consequences for astrophysical black hole formation scenario. And we have analyzed this signal under the hypothesis that uh, it is a non-spinning dynamical encounter and found that this is actually statistically preferred uh, to highly processing and quasi-circular uh, and quasi-circular mergers. So overall, this could be the very first observation of, uh, of an astrophysical dynamic encounter of, of binary black hole. And tells you a lot how much uh, um, development in waveform modeling and theory uh, impact and will impact uh, uh, astrophysics. So we, before wrapping up, just a flash on current effort on numerical relativity, especially at Yena. Uh, over the years, we have developed state-of-art numerical relativity methods with a particular focus on uh, gravitational wave astronomy and compact, uh, and compact binary astrophysics. And for example, this famous uh, physical review letter cover, uh, as well as many other visualizations that you see around, uh, are computed using data from the BAM code developing by, by Brugman et al. here in Vienna. And we have also explored in, in great detail the binary neutron stars space-time, uh, not only for uh, developing waveform, but also to understand mechanism uh, behind electromagnetic counterparts. So this uh, the plot on the right is just showing uh, our database of simulation. And every point is actually a full numerical relativity 3D, 3D simulations. So these efforts are continuing. Uh, we need better method. We need uh, more sophisticated physics inside the simulation. <clears throat> and to do that, we also need to exploit exascale computing um, that will be available uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming year. And here is a first example in which we have demonstrated recently a binary black hole evolution on a new infrastructure that is capable of parallel scaling up to uh, 10 to the 5 CPUs. And as you can understand, this method will be crucial for gravitational wave modeling, uh, for third generation, for LISA, and also to explore complex fluid dynamics and microphysics in, uh, in merger remnants. So in general, this will be an invaluable tool uh, for computational astrophysics with, uh, with compact binaries. Uh, so I am at the end. Here's a summary of the points that I discussed. I hope I'm still in on time. Uh, you can read this point from the slides. Uh, um, I actually wanted to conclude with a few words on, on Thibault. Uh, there is, of course, an enormous contribution that, uh, that he gave and is still giving. Uh, I try in part to highlight it during this talk. It will be highlighted in the, in the, in the in also future talks. Um, but I also want to stress that there's a, uh, especially for what concerns the two body problem and way for modeling, uh, there is a creative approach, a way, a way of thinking of the, of the two body problem that has influenced and will influence many research and, 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 and future research in, in our field. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Sema.